Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at moving away from Aperture uh, into other options. Uh, now in a previous screencast I talked about how to get your information out of Aperture and I covered an application called Aperture Exporter and uh, it's a great application to get your information out. Uh, it does a good job of keeping uh, as best as you can all of your metadata and some of your um, different adjustments and things. It kind of bakes those into uh, J uh, JPEG or TIFF images for you. And so I covered that last time. So if you're still wondering how to get your information out of Aperture, I'd suggest you take a look at that uh, screencast on my channel. Uh, this week what we're going to do is take a look at one of the options that you've got and that is to import into Lightroom. So we're going to take a look at Lightroom 5. Now Lightroom is available uh, for individual purchase if you want to own the application. Uh, it usually runs about $149 uh, to buy that brand new. Uh, now Adobe has come out with its uh, Creative Cloud solution as well and they have created a photography bundle here where you can uh, purchase that for $9.99 uh, a month and it includes not only Lightroom but it also includes Photoshop and Lightroom Mobile uh, as well which allows you then to be able to edit your photos and make adjustments and things on your iPad or iOS devices. So I know there's a lot of uh, philosophical differences about whether you want to rent your software or purchase it. Uh, to me I've, I'm going with this option just because it's a good option and by the time that uh, it would cost me as much as I'd pay for a new version of Lightroom uh, then they'll probably come out with version 6. And so the nice thing is is they have been updating uh, these applications quite a bit since I've been using it and so that's also a, a pretty good sign as well. So again this is just one option so we'll talk about how to do this with Lightroom. Now the nice thing about this is that Lightroom does have a trial and so if you want to try it out first just to see if this is for you or not uh, you can come down here and download uh, the Lightroom trial. Uh, you can also do the same with Photoshop as well. And so when you download uh, the application, uh, you come up to the top here, you notice up in my uh, it's toolbar at the top, I've got a uh, Creative Cloud icon here. And uh, that, that allows you to uh, take a look at uh, the various applications. This just means that Light, Lightroom is running. So what I'm going to do is let me just launch into uh, Lightroom and talk about how we begin to import uh, what we exported last time. And so you'll see on my desktop I've got the folder that we use to uh, export the information into. So let me just uh, put this down here and let's launch Lightroom. Okay, so Lightroom's launching. And so here we are with Lightroom, and this is the Lightroom interface. Now, I've already imported a few things, and that's why you see some photos here, um, because I've already done that. You'll get kind of a blank screen. Uh, but in order to import, uh, to import your photos into Lightroom, uh, you just click this Import button here. Uh, now, just real quickly, this is the Lightroom interface. On the side here is your kind of navigator. Uh, this basically changes depending on what module you're in. You notice across the top we've got these various modules. So you want to make sure that you're in the library module when you do the import. Uh, the develops where you make your adjustments. They've got maps, books, slideshow, print, and webs. But just make sure you're in the actual library module over here. And that's where you'll get the import button right here. So basically you just hit the import and it brings up this import screen. Uh, that shows you uh, kind of a walkthrough here. You've got your source that you select on this side. You've got in the middle what you want to do uh, with that source or the information and where you want to put it and where you want to actually import it into. And then you've got some file handling things over here. So let's just start on this side. Let's start with our source. I can select the source in a couple different ways. I can do it from a drop down right here. So if I just click on this drop down, you can see I've got uh, different places here where I can actually choose uh, a source here if I want to do that. So if it's a real simple place, like maybe I want my whole pictures folder in there, maybe that's where I put my uh, export from Aperture, I would click on that. Um, or you can come and actually navigate uh, your uh, file tree here, right? So these are all your folders, kind of like in the Finder. And so let's go ahead and do that. I know that it, uh, my actual photos were on the desktop, right? And it's this uh, 2013 folder right here that has it in there. Now you'll notice that when I clicked on it, nothing shows up. And that's because there's actually nothing inside this folder except for, as I click on this, another folder, right? So there's no photos showing up. Now in order for me to see the photos, if I don't want to drill down through all of this, if you've got a number of folders, you need to click this Include Subfolders uh, checkbox here, or you can click it right here. Uh, notice that even if I go down to this one, I still am not going to see it because there's some subfolders in this folder as well. 
is I can just show you right here. You see, I've got my other subfolder there, and then if I click on that, my folder uh, folders will show up. What I recommend is going to the highest level that you want. So if you've got everything in your pictures folder, you might want to start up here with your pictures folder. Mine happens to be the desktop right now. Uh, or if you've got another folder in there that says My Photos or whatever it is, uh, you'd click on that. So I'm just going to do the 2013 one right now. And you'll notice that uh, I've clicked that, and you can see it's changed up here, right? It says From... Uh, you know, users, uh, my name, desktop, 2013 folder, just like I see over here. Now that's the path. Now if I just cl uh, click on this uh, checkbox here, include subfolders, notice that now all of a sudden it's loading all of my pictures. And so all of the pictures that I've got in any subfolder uh, down in this uh, file tree here is now being loaded and I can see them at the top level. You'll notice it says I've got 40 photos here. It's got all my different uh, photos that I exported uh, that I showed you previously. And remember, we were using the, the trial version, so not every single photo uh, got uh, imp exported, uh, just a, a sample of those. And so I can view them by all photos or just new photos. So if you've already imported things before, uh, you can click on new uh, photos and it'll only show you the photos that Lightroom doesn't know about that's in your library. And so that's kind of convenient if you've, uh, if you've never done that before. Now, one of the things to understand about Lightroom that is different than Aperture is that in Aperture, you have the choice of keeping all of your uh, photos inside an Aperture file, right? And so you've got that Aperture package file that kept everything in there. Or you could, use, or you could have managed uh, files where there were references, where you had them in your own file structure, and then Aperture was just referencing those different uh, f uh, files and things. In Lightroom, basically, it is your own folder structure, and Lightroom is going to manage your files and folders inside its interface, uh, but it's not going to move them unless you choose to move them, uh, move them around. And even then, you would want to do that inside the Lightroom interface, just so Lightroom knows where those fo uh, folders are and where those files are. So basically, you want to set up your folder structure first and then go ahead and do, uh, do the import. But basically, it's, it's not going to move any of your information. It's basically going to read it from where it's located. Uh, again, unless you want to move them around, you could do that in the interface. So now that we understand that, in the middle here, this tells us what we want to do uh, with our photos. So we can say that we want to add them, which is what we're on now, or there's a couple of other options. Uh, I've got this copy as DNG, and so you'll notice if I say copy as DNG, what it's going to do is convert all of these uh, images to DNG, and it's going to move them in a new location. Uh, and now it's going to do that just so that it doesn't mix up the, the various types. Now you would use this if you wanted to uh, you know, convert your raw files into DNG. And DNG is basically just uh, uh, Adobe's um, you know, uh, file format. And so you could actually do that if you wanted to. Um, but, uh, you know, in this case, I've got JPEGs that I've exported, so I don't really need to do that. I've got a couple of uh, raw files, but uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to add them because I want to keep them in the format that they're at. I can also choose to copy uh, my uh, different uh, pictures here, and I, what that means is I'm just going to copy them to a different location. Now, this, again, comes in handy if you're putting in a camera card or something like that, you might want to copy them. I can then I can move them if I just want to move them from one location to another, or I can add them. Now you notice that when I go to add, something disappears. When I say move, stuff shows up on the right-hand side. So let me just cover uh, that real quick. Uh, what gets added is this destination area down here, because this basically is where I say if I'm going to move them, copy them, or copy as DNG, where I want to move these files to. I can move them into a subfolder, organized by date if I want to. I can choose exactly where I want to move them with all the different uh, disks that I have open on my system. So basically, just that destination area gets added. Uh, now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add them because I, I want to leave this alone. I'm just going to add it from where it's at. And so you'll notice that now that I set that, I know what I'm going to do. I've got all the ones I want to add checked. And if I didn't want to add some, I can just uncheck them. And you can see it shows me kind of blurred there. It's not going to add them if I have them unchecked. So, And down here, I can check all or I can uncheck all. Uh, I can also sort them if I want to uh, by different things, capture time, that kind of thing. And I can make the thumbnails bigger or smaller just by sliding this around. Uh, one other thing is if I don't want to go grid view, I can go like this if I want to view a bigger picture like that, or I can come back to here. So that's basically just how that works. Now, on the side here, I'm going to import them to my catalog, which means it's going to put them in my Lightroom catalog. Uh, basically, that just means that Lightroom knows where they're at. And now right here, I can do certain things with file handling. I can actually build previews that are minimal, embedded in sidecar, standard, or one-to-one. -one. Uh, on this, probably the most efficient one to use is standard because it just kind of builds, them, builds the uh, previews 
Uh, just in a standard format, I would just probably leave it at that unless you have another reason to change it. Uh, you can also build smart previews, uh, which just basically builds uh, previews that'll work if the files aren't attached. So if you've got your files on a external drive and you want to work with them maybe without the drive attached, uh, it'll build smart previews that'll allow you to work with those. So then it can then you know apply those adjustments uh, right off the previews. So uh, again, smart previews does take up more space in your catalog and on your hard drive. So again, I wouldn't use that unless you're really going to be uh, having a lot of situations where the photos actually won't be attached to your computer. Uh, then you can check don't import suspected duplicates and then uh, and then that takes care of the file handling and then down here you can actually apply your different metadata in things during uh, import. You can actually apply some developed settings. So like if I wanted all of these to be black and white I could actually put a particular black and white filter on here and it will actually add that filter uh, as it imports them. And so there's all kinds of different presets. Uh, I usually prefer to do this myself afterwards, but it is a possibility if you, again, needed to convert these to black and white, you could do that first as you import them. So that is an option. And then you've got your metadata right here. And so you can edit a preset or do a new one. I'm just going to click New. And you'll notice here's the metadata window that pops up. Uh, and again, it's got a lot of the very similar stuff that you would see in Aperture. You've got your basic info, your camera info that you can put in here. Uh, you've got your copyright uh, status. You can say it's copyrighted or public domain. Uh, you can put in your copyright if you want to, which I'd recommend doing some of that. Uh, your different creator information. As you can see, it's got quite extensive uh, metadata that you can add uh, in here. And you can just choose the things that you want to add and uh, then actually um, then have those things added to the files when they actually get imported. And so let's just put one down. I'll just put my name here. So I've got my name on there, and so that's one piece of metadata that I want to have added. Now remember, if you're importing these from Aperture, a lot of your metadata already is added, right? Because we actually did that uh, dump that we did uh, previously. So you may not want to do this. I'm just showing you what it looks like by putting it on there. In fact, I'll probably just cancel this right now. Um, but you would then fill out a name for your preset. So I can just say, let me just put my name on there. And that becomes a custom preset. And then I'll just say Create. And you'll notice over here for metadata now, I have the actual uh, preset that I created here that I can select. So you can set up your metadata ahead of time, have it uh, imported, you'll be in good shape. Here you've got keywords that you can add. You can put those in to your heart's content, uh, different keywords that you want to put on your photos. And then when you've got them all set and ready to go, you just click import. So let's go ahead and click import. And so now it's going through the process of actually importing uh, my various files and getting them put right into Lightroom. And you can see there's a status bar along the top that shows me how it's doing by importing those. Now remember, it's keeping them uh, put over here. It's not changing them, but it's actually generating thumbnails and all that kind of stuff uh, as it's importing them. And it's reading the sidecar files that were created by our Aperture exporter so that some of that information actually will stay with uh, the various files and things that we're importing. So you can see the task, it says the task is complete up here above. And so if I just go to uh, one of our uh, files here, and you can sort of take a look and see, you know, maybe what's on it. You can see I've got keywords. My keywords that were exported from Aperture are right there. Those are ready to go. Uh, I've got some metadata on here. You can see there's my metadata that I put on my files. And so everything is in working order. I can see with these little tags that I've got the metadata uh, on there. And so everything now is imported into my uh, Lightroom library. Uh, like it was in Aperture with my different tags and things that were on there. So that gives you an idea of how to do the import. Hopefully that helps you uh, get started uh, as you look at this walkthrough. And uh, maybe we'll come back and talk about a few other things uh, related to this as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.